My name is Ann Shimojima. I live in Morton Grove, Illinois, and I've uh, been a professional storyteller for about 27 years. And about five years ago, I started a family history project, and my only goal at the time was to make a photo book of family photographs. That's what I thought I was doing. And uh, it grew and grew. I started interviewing my 91-year-old aunt who had lived through the camps in World War II. And I started collecting family documents. I have my grandparents' passports from Japan and their marriage license and uh, papers from uh, the War Relocation Authority. And so then there were so many photographs that I couldn't get them all into the photo book, so I made a DVD of slideshows with uh, slideshows of all the different generations. And there's a wonderful storytelling festival called Just Stories Storytelling Festival, and it's all about social justice and racial diversity and immigration. And so I was asked to tell another story for that festival, and I thought maybe I could develop a story about my family in the camps of World War II. So I had never done a personal kind of story before. I usually tell folk tales. And so I took my experiences with working on this family history project and uh, did some more research, a lot of research, and uh, talked some more with my aunt. And I put together this uh, family story and uh, performed it at the festival. And uh, now the story is on the internet and available on a website for teachers with a lesson plan and discussion questions. I did not know this story at all because my family never talked about coming from Japan, never talked about experiences during World War II. Uh, they just didn't tell family stories like that. And this is very common among Japanese American families. It was just a very difficult experience to live through the war. And I even had a feeling that I shouldn't do it because of what I absorbed just growing up in my household. Not that they said, don't do it, but I just had the feeling that it's something that shouldn't be done. And so I had to get past that to go ahead and, and ask the questions of my aunt and interview her and start looking for these photographs. Uh, and I have to say that uh, it is one of the most meaningful things I've ever done in my life. My goal is to show them how easy it is, and being a librarian, I give them lists of resources, and you hear our books you can read about doing an oral history with your family, and here are some questions you can ask, and here are the books on how to um, make photo books, and here are all the websites. There are many websites now where you can go and you can make photo books, so um, I give those out as part of my workshop. There's a very strong Japanese cultural belief that you should not do anything to draw attention to yourself or to make people look at you. And there's a saying that the nail that sticks up will be hammered down. So when I actually started telling stories, it was part of my work as a school librarian. So uh, even though I used to be very shy and quiet, when you're a school librarian, you're constantly in front of classes, you're teaching, you're talking to groups. So I got over my fear of talking. But when I became a storyteller and I was performing and I could be in front of hundreds of people and this Japanese part of me that I didn't even know was there, rose up and I, I would hear this little voice that would say, you shouldn't do this. And I had to get over it. And when I did, I discovered, I, I like this. This is great. I enjoy being a storyteller. Um, so uh, that was kind of a surprise that I should, that I should like it so much. The, the camp story, and not just my story, but the stories of all the people who experienced the camps is an important story, and we're getting farther away from it. People who live through the camps are dying, and I hope that the stories are not lost.
and the stories are not forgotten. They are important to who we are.